O thou in Hellas, deemed of heavenly birth, Muse, formed or fable that the minstrels will, Since shammed full oft by later liars on earth, Mine dares not call thee from thy sacred hill. Yet there I've wandered by thy vaunted rill, Yes, sighed over Delphi's long deserted shrine, Where save that feeble fountain, all is still nor mote my shell await the wary nine, to grace so plain a tale, this lowly lay of mine. Willow in Albion's isle there dwelt a youth, who knee in virtue's ways did take the light, but spent his days in riot most uncouth, and vexed with mirth the drowsy ear of night. Ah me, in sooth he was a shameless right, sore given to revel and ungodly glee, Few earthly things found favour in his sight, Save concubines and carnal company, And flaunting waysailers of high and low degree. Child Harold was he height, But whence his name, and lineage long, It suits me not to say. Suffice it that perchance they were of fame, And had been glorious in another day. But one said Lousel soils a name for I, however mighty in the olden time, nor all that heralds rake from coffined clay, nor florid prose, nor honeyed lies of rhyme, can blazon evil deeds or consecrate a crime. Child Harold basked him in the noontide sun, disporting there like any other fly, nor deemed before his little day was done one blast might chill him into misery. But long ere scarce a third of his passed by, worse than adversity the child befell. He felt the fullness of satiety, then loathed he in his native land to dwell, which seemed to him more lone than Eremite's sad sail. For he through sin's long labyrinth had run, nor made atonement when he did amiss, had sighed to many though he loved but one, and that loved one, alas, could never be his. Ah, happy she, to escape from him whose kiss had been pollution upon out so chaste, who soon had left her charms for vulgar bliss, and spoilt her goodly lands to gild his waist, nor calm domestic peace had ever deigned to taste. And now child Harold was sore sick at heart, and from his fellow bacchanals would flee. Tis said at times the sullen tear would start, but pride congealed the drop within his eye. Apart he stalked in joyless reverie, and from his native land resolved to go and visit scorching climes beyond the sea, With pleasure drugged him almost longed for woe, And even for change of scene would seek the shades below. The child departed from his father's hall, It was a vast and venerable pile, So old it seemed only not to fall, Yet strength was pillared in each massy aisle, Monastic dome condemned to uses vile, Where superstition once had made her den. Now Paphian girls were known to sing and smile, A monk might deem their time was come again, If ancient tales say true, nor wrong these holy men. Yet oft times in his maddest mirthful mood, Strange pangs would flash along child Harold's bro as if the memory of some deadly feud or disappointed passion lurked below. But this none knew, nor haply cared to know, for his was not that open, artless soul that feels relief by bidding sorrow flow, nor sought he friend to counsel or condole whatever his grief mote be which he could not control. And none did love him, Though to hall and bower, he gathered revellers 
from far and near. He knew them flatterers of the festive hour, the heartless parasites of present cheer. Ye, none did love him, not his leman's dear, but pomp and power alone are woman's care, and where these are light, Eros finds a fair. Maidens like moths are ever caught by glare, and Mammon wins his way where Seraphis might despair. Child Harold had a mother not forgot, though parting from that mother he did shun, a sister whom he loved but saw her not, before his weary pilgrimage begun. If friends he had, he bade at a yo to none. Yet deem not hence his breast a breast of steel, ye who have known what tis to dote upon. At few dear objects will in sadness feel. Such partings break the heart they fondly hope to heal. His house, his home, his heritage, his lands, the laughing dames in whom he did delight, whose large blue eyes, fair locks, and snowy hands might shake the saintship of an anchorite and long had fed his youthful appetite, his goblets brimmed with every costly wine, and all that moat to luxury invite, without a sigh he left to cross the brine, and traverse Paynim shores, and pass earth's central line. The sails were filled, and fair the light winds blew, as glad to waft him from his native home, and fast the white rocks faded from his view, and soon were lost in circumambient foam. And then it may be, of his wish to roam, repented he, but in his bosom slept, the silent fort, nor from his lips did come, one word of wail, whilst others sat and wept, and to the reckless gales unmanly moaning kept. But when the sun was sinking in the sea, he seized his harp, which he at times could string, and strike, albeit with untaught melody. When deemed he no strange ear was listening, and now his fingers over it he did fling, and turned his farewell, in the dim twilight, well flew the vessel of his snowy wing, and fleeting shores receded from his sight. Thus to the elements he poured his last good night.